we come to worship our God on this third Sunday of Easter. Our Gospel today tells of the appearance of the risen Lord to his disciples. He feeds them as a symbol that he will feed his church with the gift of himself in the Eucharist. We also gather today to celebrate the sacrament of First Holy Communion. As the children receive the body and blood of Jesus for the first time, we are all reminded to thank God for the wonderful way Jesus is present with us in the gift of the Eucharist. Rejoicing in the realization of God's loving care for us all, let us sing number 315, The God of All Grace, number 315. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, the Lord our God has created this water, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Praise to you, almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offered yourself on the cross that in the blood and water flowing from your side and through your death and resurrection the church might be born. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of Jordan so that we might all be baptized into you. We pray by the mystery of this consecrated water, remind us of our new and spiritual birth in baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins. And through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. the apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things. As the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him, the Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in numbers, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. to John. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but his disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And Simon Peter heard that it, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garments, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. Yet the other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. Now, this was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? 
Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. We are in the season of Easter, praising God for defeating sin and death. Liturgically, we also find in these readings different sacraments that we celebrate year-round, but it seems like we celebrate them uh, in a unique way for the first time for many in the season of Easter. Baptism being the first at the Easter Vigil. Many people were baptized in this font set up in front of the tabernacle. The next morning, I think there were several more. Last week, we heard about the great gift of the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven them. Great gift of the church, being the instrument or the conduit of God's grace, extending it to all as children so that they can be reconciled. And we also in this season have heard kind of a glimmer uh, of what took place before Christ suffered and died. Said that the, the two that Cleopas and his other companion who were going to uh, down the road uh, to Emmaus, they recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. So again, instituted at the Last Supper, but then kind of highlighted in that gospel, uh, the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of Jesus being made present for us all over the world and for all time. Now, we have the opportunity to receive. We've already celebrated in this parish the Sacrament of Confirmation as well. Liturgically, we will celebrate it again at Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus broke the bonds of sin and death, where again he poured out his spirit upon the apostles and those with them, filling them with great strength, with great courage, all these things we celebrate during the season of, of Easter because they are gifts from God given and received. And for some of us today, for the first time, we will receive the gift of the Eucharistic presence, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ as they did on the night before he died. Now, I had the opportunity to be here uh, last week for the uh, kind of the, the walkthrough of what we're doing, and I, I found it uh, with great joy uh, telling the second graders and those who are a little bit older that for the first time, when they come up, they don't need to put their hands across their chest. The reason we've waited this long is because second grade is seen as a very um, important a time for understanding. When you're in second grade, it is the beginning of understanding between right and wrong and, and being able to uh, dis distinguish the sacred from the profane or the divine from the ordinary. And so every other piece of bread that you have ever put in your mouth has been ordinary. And maybe it was good, maybe it was bad, maybe it was burnt toast, maybe it was the best bread you've ever had. But on the night before Jesus died, he took bread and then as he did at the beginning of all creation, he spoke words of power and he brought something that wasn't there into existence. He said, this is my body, which will be given up for you. Could the apostles have even vaguely understood what he was talking about? Maybe, as they look back, it was a lot easier. And he took the chalice filled with wine he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Covenant, 
that relationship between God and his people, whereby God is always faithful and we are always seeking the grace of right relationship, of mercy, of courage, and of spiritual growth. So today, for the first time, some will receive. Today, for the next time, some have been receiving thousands upon thousands of times. For you who have done it many times, I would ask you, that to the extent that you are able, go back in time to the day that you received for the first time. All the preparation that went into that, all the uh, catechesis, but then all of a sudden, dressing in suits and in dresses, great froofy stuff in your hair. I don't know how to explain that. I grew up with all brothers. We didn't do that. Uh, but you look beautiful today. So all of you, try to remember that day that you did for the first time receive Christ Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. This is a season of new life, of new growth. So no matter how many times, if it's been in the tens of thousands, today is a day where you will receive God into your own body. That temple that was given, that was created on the day of your baptism. Remember this. This is a sacred thing that we are called to renew over and over and over again. Many of you might remember Marguerite Kubrick. Uh, I think she was 106 when she died. She very, very rarely ever missed daily mass coming at 1210. And so on, I think it was her 100th birthday, I did all the math required to kind of guess and get a close estimate of how many times she's received communion. I've forgotten it, but you can imagine someone who's 100 years old or, or older. But she had the ability to make each one, in a sense, her first. I mean, when I gave her communion, I could just sense the grief, the, the, the sacredness that was being exchanged. This, this child of God, sacred, being in communion with God, the divine, sacred. And in that gift of communion was that strengthening that she needed for the next day, the next week, and the next month. So I rejoice. I'm so glad that I can be here today to, to give communion, to give Jesus Christ to some of you for the first time and for others for many, many times. Well, let's remember as we go back in Scripture how the apostles must have felt. The gift that, that Jesus gave them so that, he, that they in turn could give Christ Jesus to those, those who never met him in the flesh, never met him in person, but they can have the same intimacy of relationship that the apostles themselves had. What a glorious and blessed day this is, for some for the first time, and for many of us for the next time. Let us rejoice and be glad in this season of new life and new growth. We are not done yet. God has more to give us. And if we prepare ourselves worthily, then we will be filled with joy this time like no, never before. During the season of Easter, we go back to a, a simpler creed. We use the Apostles' Creed and we, we try as best we can to remember the teachings of the Apostles and what gave them strength in their daily life. So let us join our voices into one and profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confident faith, let us ask the risen Lord to answer the prayers we now place before him. For the church, 
that we will recognize the presence of the risen Christ in the ordinary circumstances of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, that they will be effective in responding to the needs of the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer rejection or prosecution because of their faith, that, like the apostles, they will be given courage and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the seminarians of our diocese and for all those preparing to spend their lives in the service of God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children receiving First Holy Communion today, that they may continue to know Jesus' love for them throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert Furmeister, Bill Rockefeller, Marguerite Harney, and for all those who have died in the hope of rising again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of new life, may we always proclaim our love for you as we live our faith in Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. As we prepare for the liturgy of the Eucharist, let us sing number 163, Two Are Bound for Emmaus, number 163. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has become our sacrifice. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope. Thomas, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever 
and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Be with you, Let us offer each other the sign of peace. At this Mass, where we have those receiving for the first time, those who are received First Holy Communion will come up first, and then the rest of the family, the rest of the community, will come uh, after they are completed. But all of us will receive the body and blood of Christ as if for the first time. My sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mystery may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. Only a few announcements. 
All high school graduates and their parents are invited to a special breakfast this Thursday morning at 7 a.m. in the parish hall. Please call the parish office for, uh, for reservations. Uh, I am going to provide uh, the world famous Belger brand muffins for that breakfast. So if you are on the edge, you're coming now. Uh, script certificates will be sold this evening after Mass. There is a First Communion blessing, and so I would ask that all those who receive uh, the Lord Jesus in the Holy Eucharist for the first time, please stand. Lord Jesus, we rejoice with these boys and girls who have received the wonderful gift of your presence in Holy Communion for the first time today. We ask you to bless them, protect them, and keep them in your love. May they always remember how great it is to be so close to you every time they receive Holy Communion. May these children and their families continue to grow in love for you and for each other. We ask this with confidence and faith, for you are God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Let us, appreciating the new spiritual growth of these, our children of the parish, let's give them a warm round of applause. All God's children, please stand. I mentioned in the homily that we, we appreciate that in second grade, give or take a few months, children have reached the age of reason. I pray for all of us gathered here that we will never get too old and get past the age of reason. God's blessings are always with his children. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Filled with Easter joy, let us sing number 167, Alleluia, Alleluia, number 167. Friday morning, not Thursday morning, but the muffins will still be fresh. Okay. <laughs> 